guys. Um, I'm right in my bathroom and today I have a book haul for you. Um, I've quite a lot of books to show you. There are one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have 16 books to show you. Please bear in mind that this is spreading from July till yesterday. But still quite a lot of books. Um, I think I'm pretty much set for a while. But yeah, I read a few of them already. So I'm just going to jump into it. The first two books I'm going to show you are the ones I bought in July. Um, I have One Day, which I spoke about in my July favorites. Um, this is just your classic love story with modern twist. Um, it's really, really good. It's really emotionally written. Um, it's by David Nichols. Um, he also wrote Star for Tan. Sorry, there's something in my eye. My eyeball. <laughs> it, yeah. Um, he won this book. Rights were bought for the film. Um, the film rights were bought from the book, whatever. Um, he wrote the screenplay just so that it didn't get messed with too much, but I've still heard really bad things about the film. I've yet to see it. I'm kind of putting off seeing it because I just loved the book so much. I didn't think I would. It's one of those books that have been hyped up so much that you put off buying it, but it is genuinely a really good book and the hype is, well, some of it isn't. Like, it's not as amazing and groundbreaking as some people say it is. It is still a really good read. The second one is Wither by... I always get her name wrong. Lauren De, Ste De, St Lauren De Stefano. This is the Chemical Gardens trilogy. This first book, the second book, Beaver, comes out next year, which I'm so friggin' excited for. Um, this is basically the um they found a cure for all diseases kind of thing and they've genetically engineered a generation of perfect humans but the jet the children of these perfect humans the girls die at 20 and the boys die at 25 so they have to get all their you know make babies and continue Breeding, but the people of the first generation, you know, they're, they're in their 80s and they're still fit as fiddle. And this is about a girl called Ryan who is kidnapped by the gatherers, and the gatherers collect girls who are orphaned or maybe not orphaned, and um, they sell them off to rich people who are, you know, want to continue their line. And she gets sold on to the Linden and his father is a scientist who is trying to find a cure for this disorder of the genes. And basically this um, trilogy, the, story, the main storyline in this book is her trying to find a, a way to escape to get back to her twin brother back in New York. And... Um, the sub the sub storyline of the trilogy I think is gonna be about the disease mostly. You know what it is. There, there's a main story throughout the whole trilogy, but each book has its own individual storyline. But yeah, it's definitely a good read. It's supposed to be young adult. Being twenty two, I still consider myself a young adult, but um, I wouldn't say read that any younger than fourteen. It's definitely quite dark, dark book. Okay, next I have some stuff from Waterstones because they had three for two on all, all paperback fiction. Magical words, people, just absolutely magical words. I got this one by Julian, is it Julian? I think it's Julian. 
Julian Fellows, um, Pastor Imperfect and Snobs and this is the person who wrote the Downton Abbey. I don't know if the book or if it's just the TV series. We'll see. Because it doesn't. It doesn't have a list of previous works in here. So I don't know if Downton Abbey was a book because they didn't have it on the shelf. But um, it was two books for $7.99. I have no idea what they're about, but I thought it was appealing at the time. Perks of being a wallflower. I hear this is going to be a film with Emma Watson. So I've heard. But it does sound really good. Charlie is a freshman and while he's not the biggest geek in school, um, he's by no means popular. Shy, introspective, intelligent, beyond... Oh, la. Shy, introspective, intelligent beyond his years, yet socially awkward, he is a wallflower, caught between trying to live his life and trying to run away from it. Uh, Charlie is attempting to navigate his way through uncharted territories, the world of first dates, mixtapes, family dramas and new friends, the world of sex, drugs and a rocky horror picture show when all one requires is that perfect song on that perfect drive to feel infinite. But Charlie can't stay on the sideline forever. Standing on the fringes of life offers a unique perspective, but there comes a time to see it what it looks like from the dance floor. I um, I just, it sounds so good. I know a lot of people study this in school. I didn't, um, along with numerous other books like you know, I didn't study To Kill a Mockingbird or Catcher in the Rye, but I do want to read them eventually. Um. So this is possibly next on my to read list after the series I'm currently reading. Next I have Delirium by Lauren Oliver. She wrote Before I Fall, which is a book I wish I'd picked up. Um, but this one is how they find a cure for love. I've heard. They say that the cure for love will make me happy and safe forever and I've always believed them until now. Now everything has changed. Now I'd rather be infected with love for the tiniest slither of a second than live a hundred years suffocated by a lie. There was a time when love was the most important thing in the world. People would go to the ends of the earth to find it. They would tell lies for it, even kill for it. Then at last they found a cure. I like the sound of this one. Um, so uh, this shall be read right after Perks of the Wallflower, maybe, possibly. Um, then we have Your Presence is Requested at Cervanto by Mail Chapman or Mal Chapman. It's M-A-M-A-I-L-E. Hopefully that showed up. But this is about um, a hospital in Finland with lots of rich people, some of them with pretend illnesses and it's about this doctor who um, who uh, I don't know actually I have absolutely no idea um, it sounded good at the time but I just, I, I think I might have read it wrong and thought it was completely something else. But I'll let you guys know. This was definitely just a random find. But sometimes random finds tend to be good. Um, Flowers in the Attic by Virginia Andrews. For some reason in the young adult section she is called VC Andrews and it's uh, like a, a fairly sugar coated cover. But this is about, uh, what's it? It was a game of happy families. The four children had such perfect lives in such a happy golden family. It was a game of hide and seek. Their father died suddenly. The children now live alone, hidden in the airless attic. It was a case of tender loving murder. Their mother promised they would stay only long enough to inherit the fortune, but gradually for she forgot.
Flower is in the attic, the compelling story of a family's betrayal and heartbreak, love and revenge. Um, I've heard really good things about Virginia Andrews and um, this is supposed to be the book you should start with. And I'm, they study this in school now so I'm guessing it's good. Um, so, I'm excited to read this. This one, I, I, I'm sorry I jumped on, my, on the wagon. This is book one of A Song of Fire and Ice, A Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin. And this is 800 and odd pages of medievalness. I've never actually watched the show. I've heard really good things about it, but my boss, he reads these and he said the first three are good, but after that it kind of gets a bit me, a bit half-assed, so we'll see how it goes. This will probably be a winter read when the cafe is absolutely dead and we spend half the day reading books. That happens. It's kind of fun. We get paid to read all day. Um, no, you leave it still last, actually. Like, I never have my Amazon order. I've, I've been meaning to pick up these books for a while, and then the new driver game came out with the um, special edition box with the model car on it, and Nick really wanted it, so I bought it for him. And I just picked these up since I was ordering anyway. This is Edward Bellamy looking backward. Um, this is the next version of a bookmark. He's reading this at the moment. He really, really wanted it. Basically, this guy pretty much predicted everything down to debit cards, credit cards, cars, everything. He predicted this way back in 1988. So, I tried to read it a little bit, but it's very, very, very long winded. Um, but yeah, I think this will be really interesting. It's kind of, I don't know if it's a dystopian or anything, it's just prediction of the future. It's supposed to be good, that's all I know. So I'm, I'm, I'll be excited to read that when Nick eventually finishes up. Because although it's thin, I think it'll be a long slog read. Because you might have to go back and read bits to fully comprehend it. I got The Maze Runner by James Dashner. I heard about this through Chapter Chicks. I'll link them below because they're super, super freaking awesome. If you're not subscribed to Chapter Chicks and you love books, you need to because they are pretty much the booktuber community equivalent of Eleven Gorgeous. Eleventh Gorgeous, I should say. Um, instead of elven gorgeous, <laughs> but they are awesome. Those two girls, they just, they just, they deserve so much praise for what they do. They do these things called novel notions. They put so much research into it. It's amazing. But um, enough for that. Um, this is about a bunch of kids that wake up in a maze and all they remember is their name, and they have to work out why they're there, who they are. Or something like that before the monster gets them. Um, it says, I've, I've been told it's a cross between Lord of the Flies, which I haven't read, and The Running Man, which I haven't read, but after I've read this I will probably add those two to my list. And yeah, so The Maze Runner. Um, this is part of a series, but yeah. Sorry, I'm babbling. This is White Cat by Holly Black. And this is the Curse Workers series. Another one I heard about through Chapter Chicks. Um, and this is about a world where people are um, like they have to wear gloves because their fingers are full of magic and if they touch people without their gloves on they can accidentally curse them without meaning to. So they have to wear gloves all the time. Um, so yeah, this should be interesting. I'll let you guys know.
And um, this is another one that I heard a lot about through numerous booktubers. And this is Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Rex. Um, this story was uh, based around all these really creepy old pictures that Ransom Riggs had found. And there's some more in the back there. This is first time I bought a hardback since Breaking Dawn, so this is how excited I was about this book that I couldn't wait for like it to come out in paperback. I had to have it now. It just it's full of random pages that pro that are supposed to go along with the storyline of just random people. This is quite a cool one. But um I'll read the synopsis for you. It all awaits to be it all waits to be discovered in Miss Peregrine's home for peculiar children, an unforgettable novel that mixes fiction with and photography in a thrilling reading experience. As our story opens, a horrific family travel tragedy sets sixteen year old Jacob journeying to a remote island off the west coast off the coast of Wales, where he discovers crumbling ruins of Miss Peregrine's home for peculiar children. As Jacob explores this abandoned explores its abandoned bedrooms and hallways, it becomes clear that Miss Peregrine's children were more than peculiar. They may have been dangerous. They may have been quarantined on a deserted island for good reason. And somehow, impossible though it seems, they may still be alive. Um the thing that strikes me about this is I used to go on holiday to Wales and we used to go to this this little village called Tambay and they have a south beach and a north beach and in between the two the tide goes out and there's this big rock it's this massive like island rock and on top of it is a building and it used to be an asylum I just I used to wonder what what the hell was inside there and I think this will probably feed my imagination to what's inside this asylum I hope to one day maybe go back there and maybe sneak in and investigate this asylum. So if anyone wants to come with me, just, just comment below let me know if you want to come. Because I think that would be the best experience ever in the world. Um, I got this one on a whim. It was reduced down to 225. This is Gone by Michael Grant and I read the first few pages um, it says on the back that in the blink of an eye, everyone over the age of 15 disappears. Literally, in the blink of an eye, they just disappear. Like, in one bit they describe uh, how the, the teacher disappeared in the middle of curving an O. Like, they literally just vanish. So I think it's one of those things that are really, like, it's really unexplained to start with. In reading the series you will understand more. Um, it's very, it's fairly mind-boggling. Um, I didn't realise when I bought this, like, it's like neon yellow along the outside. But yeah, that's, that's totally irrelevant. But, um, I'm, I'm interested to eventually read this book. It does sound good. But every book sounds good, that's why we buy them, right? And then I have the series I'm currently reading. The Mortal Instruments series. Um, I first started reading City of Bones. I borrowed that from the library and about a quarter of pardon me. I'm about a quarter of the way through it. And I absolutely loved it and I just happened to be more and WH Smith and I noticed that all children's books were on three for two. So I got these. I know I'm bad, very, very bad. I got City of Bones, City of, Gla City of Ashes and City of Glass. Um, I'm not sure if there is only three in the series, it doesn't really have like the lineup inside the cover like most series do, but I got the first three. And these are very odd, um, very interesting, but very odd. 
um, out, outlook on the um, like what's it called? That's urban fantasy genre. Yeah, I think that's what it's called. I like an urban fantasy genre. Um, it's set in New York. Um, about this girl. I think she's called Clary. Like her full name's um, Clarissa, but for short they call her Clary. And um, she sees these people that no one else can see, but she's not crazy. These people are actually there, they're just invisible to everybody else, and it leads her into the dark underworld of New York. And I'm gonna leave it at that. I might review these when I'm done. Um, but yeah, they do sound really good, or they, or I wouldn't have bought all three. Um, so yeah, that is my fairly massive book haul. Um, if I buy any more books before December, please feel free to shoot me, because I don't need any more books ever. I have enough to start a mobile library. I should do a book collection at some point. Once I get all my books down, I'll just set them all out on the floor because I don't even have enough bookcases, book space, shelf space. Yeah, shelf space for them all. Sorry about that stuff. Um, it's really, really windy outside. Um, yeah, they said we were going to get like the aftermath of Hurricane Irene, but no, we're just getting general autumn weather, high winds. Lots of rain. It's all good. You know what's really scary? Being on a motorway on a double darker bus when it's 90 mile an hour winds. The wind is going faster than the bus. That's not good. That's fairly fucking scary. So I, I feel sympathy for people who've been in a hurricane. If it's anything half as scary as being on that bus in 90 mile an hour winds, I think I would possibly shit myself. But anyways, that was my book haul. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any books you want to recommend me for um, like future, you know, post December shopping because I'm not buying any more books until after December. Uh, hopefully I'll get lots of nice ones from Santa for Christmas. Fingers crossed. Um, but yeah, I'll see you guys later. Bye bye.